Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is going to be super memorizable, but also extremely important. It's very important that for your exam, you're able to pick up these garbage governmental points. And ultimately what we're talking about is allocating and classifying the different types of governmental funds and knowing how to categorize them in their respective fund type. Okay, so our governmental funds are going to have five special funds that you need to be able to identify and classify as a governmental fund. Okay, so this is going to be the definition of Flashcard City. Okay, so very important that we memorize our different types of funds. Okay, so once again, before we dive into it, when you think about governmental funds, you're thinking modified accrual and current financial resource measurement focus. So our five governmental funds are going to be the general fund, the capital projects fund, the permanent fund, the special revenue fund, as well as the debt service fund. So think about each of these funds as special savings accounts, okay? So special bank accounts that are separated basically so that they can apply money to specific projects or very specific government-related expenditures. Okay, so firing this off with the general fund, this is going to be used to account for ordinary operations of a governmental unit, and it's going to be financed generally from taxes as well as other general revenues. So at the end of the day, the general fund is going to be used to account for financial sources that are not restricted to specific purposes or otherwise required to be accounted for in another fund. All right, so not restricted for specific purposes. An example of this could be to purchase, say, supplies. Okay, so that would be purchased in order to meet operating expenditures. Whereas capital project funds, these are going to be used for tracking financial sources that are going to be used to acquire and or construct a major capital asset. So a major capital asset could be something like a highway or a railway, any sort of dams that need to be built by the government. The construction of these projects are all going to come out of the capital projects fund. Okay, so subways are something that are popular here in New York. These are examples of things that could be financed from the capital projects fund. The permanent fund and the special revenue fund are used to account for general governmental financial resources, and they are going to be restricted by law or contractual agreements to specific purposes other than debt services or major capital projects, right? So they're going to exist as long as the government has resources that are dedicated to these specific purposes. And finally, we have the debt service fund, right? So think of this as a separate savings account just used for debt payments. So this is going to be a fund that is used for reserves, and the reserves will be used to pay interest and principal payments on certain debts that are outstanding. And ultimately, the purpose of the debt service fund is going to be intended to reduce the risk of a debt security for specific investors. So this can be used, once again, to mitigate the risk of any of these debt-related investments. So those are going to be our five governmental funds that you absolutely need to know. You need to know, once again, that these governmental funds will always apply the modified accrual basis of accounting, as well as the current resource measurement focus. Okay, so know that related to governmental funds, and you're going to be fine. I know, I know. It's not why you're here, but I just want to reel you back in for a second and give a quick shout out to Connor for passing all four sections of his CPA exam after switching to Universal CPA Review. Using Universal compared to traditional text materials was a big game changer for me studying for the CPA. They are a visual learning course, and they have shorter lectures compared to other materials, and they also help you prepare by not only giving you the main points in the lectures, but also having a video to walk you through every multiple choice question, which if you're like me, working through problems and then actually having somebody with a visual lecture for every multiple choice question is a game changer and helped me tremendously through studying. You're the man, Connor. All right, get back to studying. So now we're talking about our proprietary funds, and these are going to be business organizations within the government. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, these are going to be operating in the same capacity as any other business in a for-profit organization. So when you're thinking about proprietary, let's first start by defining what this word even means. So we know that this is going to relate to an owner or ownership, and how does this apply? Well, we're talking about proprietary funds. Proprietary funds are going to be applied to entities that operate by an owner or ownership. Okay, so let's dig into it. We said governmental funds are going to be the only funds that apply the modified accrual basis of accounting as well as the current resource measurement focus. Okay, we weren't lying. Both our proprietary funds and our fiduciary funds, which we'll talk about after this, apply the full accrual basis of accounting as well as the economic resource measurement focus. 
So specifically talking about the full accrual basis of accounting, what does that mean? That means that they are going to recognize revenues when they are earned and expenses when they are incurred. Okay, so this is just like all other for-profit entities that are preparing their financial statements as any other proprietor would. In addition to that, the proprietary fund individual financial statements are going to apply the economic resource measurement focus. So when comparing this to the current resource measurement focus, the economic resource measurement focus is going to include long-term assets and liabilities. So it's also going to include current resources as well. Okay, so this is going to be the whole package for fund financial statement reporting purposes. So when it comes to the actual financial statements that will be prepared within the proprietary fund financial statements, we're going to talk about the statement of net position, the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in net position which will include both non-operating revenue and non-operating expense items in addition to operating expenditures. So these are going to be our primary financial statements that we need to understand. So let's start by talking about the statement of net position. This is going to report all assets plus deferred outflows of resources, and it's going to be reduced by all liabilities plus deferred inflows of resources. Okay, so just like net assets are taking all of our assets less all of our liabilities, similar story here. The only extra item is going to be these deferred components. So it's all assets plus these deferred outflows, and that's going to be reduced by all liabilities plus the deferred inflows. So the deferred inflows related to these assets, right, our unrestricted net position is going to be the residual amount from the net position not included in the net investment of capital assets or restricted net position. And finally, the net investment in capital assets are going to include deferred outflows of resources as well as deferred inflows of resources attributable to the acquisition or construction and improvement of those assets. And keep in mind, this is all going to be less any sort of accumulated depreciation and outstanding balances of bonds or mortgages, right? notes or other borrowings attributed to the acquisition or construction in these assets. Okay, so once again, take note that the statement is going to include all of these assets plus deferred outflows, less all liabilities plus deferred inflows of resources. Okay, so at the end of the day, we're going to have this relate to our statement of net position. We also have our statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in that net position. So this is going to be similar to what we talked about related to our governmental funds, but as you can see, it's a little bit different. So it's going to be operating revenues, less operating expenditures, plus non-operating revenues, less any non-operating expenses. So that's going to equate to the change in net position. So now let's talk about our funds within the proprietary funds. So this is going to consist of those two business-like funds that operate within a government. For your exam, you need to know about the Internal Service Fund as well as the Enterprise Fund. Okay, so the Internal Service Fund is going to be used to track goods or services internally. Okay, so the Internal Service Fund is going to track these services between departments. And here's the key, on a cost reimbursement fee basis. So an example of this could be maintenance departments. So let's assume that these maintenance departments are providing equipment maintenance services to other departments. So hence, in between departments. So this is going to be on a cost reimbursement basis. Ultimately, this is going to be the key characteristics that differentiates the internal service fund from the enterprise fund. Okay, So the enterprise fund, on the other hand, is going to be transactions made between customers and the enterprise. So associate this with external customers within the transaction. Okay, so the enterprise fund is going to be E for enterprise, which will consist of external customers. I for internal service fund is going to consist of internal customers. Okay, so in between departments. E for enterprise, I for internal service fund. Okay, so the enterprise fund is going to be used to set up accounts for the acquisition and operation of governmental services. So let's go through a couple of examples. This could be for things like food service programs or athletic stadiums, right? The community swimming pool. Those are all examples of external funds. Ultimately, we need to remember that internal service funds and any enterprise funds are going to be your proprietary funds. Also, very critical to remember, this is going to be reported based on the full accrual basis of accounting, as well as the economic resource measurement focus. So we are going to be recognizing all revenues when they're earned, all expenses when incurred. We're going to include all of our long-term fixed assets, as well as our long-term liabilities within the statement of net position. Okay, so let's wrap up our different funds by understanding the fiduciary funds. So just like the proprietary funds, these are going to apply the full accrual basis of accounting, right? That's going to recognize revenues when they are earned and expenses when incurred. So they are also going to apply the economic resource measurement focus. So for all intents and purposes, fiduciary funds will recognize their individual financial statements the same way as proprietary funds. They're also going to include those fixed assets that are long-term and the long-term liabilities. So 
what are the funds related to the fiduciary funds? So these are going to consist of the investment trust funds, the pension trust funds, and the private purpose trust funds, and we can't forget about the custodial funds. So when in doubt, think back on Mr. Fiduciary. He will guide you home. So going through each of these, the investment trust fund is going to be a fund that is used to account for investments. Okay, simple enough. Pension trust funds are ultimately going to be similar to what we talked about in our pension lecture. Okay, so these are government funds related to pension plans, similar to retirement accounts. But these funds for governmental purposes are going to account for resources of defined benefit plans, defined contribution plans, post-retirement benefit plans, and any other employee benefit plans. Okay, so our pension trust funds. These should be easy enough to remember. We have our private purpose trust funds. So these are going to be assigned to all other trust funds when principal and income are used to benefit specific individuals or private organizations, right? So private purpose trust funds are going to be the last one other than custodial funds. So custodial funds are going to relate a little bit more towards miscellaneous bonds. Okay, so this is kind of new to the exam. It's still being tested, but the story of these funds are going to be used to account for resources that are being temporarily held by another governmental unit. So unlike proprietary funds, we're going to be reporting these funds by fund type, not major funds. So the primary financial statements within the fiduciary funds are going to consist of the statement of net position and the statement of changes in fiduciary net position. Okay, so let's wrap this up by doing a quick summary of all of our different funds. Right, so our governmental funds are going to be the only funds that apply the modified accrual basis of accounting as well as the current resource measurement focus. They're going to be excluding long-term liabilities and long-term fixed assets. Okay, so current resource measurement focus is going to consist of current resources only. All right, so when it comes to proprietary funds, we know that we're going to apply the full accrual basis of accounting as well as the economic resource measurement focus. And the same is going to go for fiduciary funds. But for proprietary funds, we're going to be focused on internal service funds as well as our enterprise funds. And the breakout of the fiduciary funds are going to consist of those investment trust funds, the private purpose trust funds, our pension trust funds, and finally our custodial funds. Okay, so as we said, this is the definition of Flashcard City. We really need to be able to classify each of these funds and bucket them within their individual fund financial statements. Okay, so although it's called government funds, there's an individual fund type called governmental funds. Okay, so don't confuse all of our governmental funds with this governmental fund classification. Because at the end of the day, you need to know how we are going to break out our governmental funds and how they're going to be separated from our proprietary and fiduciary funds. Because how they are going to be reported in their individual fund financial statements is going to be the biggest difference.